I've got a few requests asking for an all-in-one OpenCV and TensorFlow installation video, so that's what this video is. Just a reminder that you can leave comments with requests for new videos from me. I try to read them all and respond to some of them, and I really appreciate them. I'm going to try to show every step, all the way from setting up the Raspberry Pi all the way to finishing with a fully installed TensorFlow and OpenCV. Here's the standard list of what you need for most Raspberry Pi projects, but the most important one here is a newer Pi. It's going to make it so much easier if you have a Pi 4 that's 64-bit, but say you don't. Say you have a Pi 3 32-bit, or you have a Pi 4 running a 32-bit OS. That's okay too. I can make all those work. Some people with Pi 3s do have trouble, but I will provide a method that has worked for some people in the past. Starting with setting up your Pi. We're going to put Raspberry Pi OS on the Raspberry Pi, and thankfully Raspberry Pi has an imager all built in. So scroll down to this link. You can find everything in the description, this link, timestamps, commands. It's all in the description. And I have Windows, so download for Windows. But I already have it installed. This is what it looks like. Choose an OS. I'm running a Pi 4B, so I'm going to do a 64-bit OS. And to find that, OS Other, and then scroll down to 64-bit. Awesome. Storage. Let's plug in my micro SD card to my computer. And now when I click choose storage, that is my micro SD. Be careful you're not overwriting some important hard drive or something. And before I click write, let's click this little gear. And this is the best part. We can set our host name so we don't need to find the IP address of our Raspberry Pi when we enable SSH. We can set up our username and password. We can configure Wi-Fi ahead of time. That's very handy. Set the locale settings, and then also some persistent fun settings, like play a sound when finished. Save that, and then click Write. This takes about 10 minutes. Awesome, plug her in, boot up the Pi. I'm gonna be using SSH. If you're just using your Pi as a desktop, feel free to open a terminal and we'll be at the same point. All right, SSH into your Pi however you're comfortable. Pi at Raspberry Pi. This is the first time, yes. Password, okay, so everyone should have a terminal window open. First things first, cat etc os dash release. Where are we? Okay, scrolled up a bit. I have version 11 bullseye. That's the newest version. Maybe you have version 10 buster, but if you have anything older than that, things might not work how they should. So I'd recommend going back, following that setup process that I just did so you can get a newer version of Raspberry Pi OS. Speaking of getting newer versions, with any good tutorial, you should sudo apt update. Okay, and then sudo apt upgrade. Yes. That'll take a few minutes, but after that's done, let's keep moving. Check your Python version. Python 3 dash capital V. I'm running Python 3.9.2. And then let's also check another thing uname-m, so arch64. It might also say armv7l, let's so remember this, that's important. These two things, Python 3.9 and then arch64, or whatever your output was. Why are those things important? Follow me to this website, I'll have a link to it in the description. And this is all our TensorFlow shell scripts that we can, we can use. TensorFlow doesn't really support the Raspberry Pi, but there are plenty of privately hosted shell scripts and wheel files that make it work. And now let's figure out how to read this. So this is the TensorFlow version. CP is your Python version, so 3.9. And then this is whatever the output of uname-m was, arch64 or armv7l. And what we want to do is match our results to this version. So I had Python 3.9, so I can select this one, and then I also had ARCH64, so I can select this shell script. I'm going to open that in a new tab. But notice that all these newer versions of TensorFlow 
do not have any ARM v7L. So if you're running that 32-bit operating system, you're going to have to go back to TensorFlow 2.5. And then there's another limitation. It's just up to Python 3.7. You might not have Python 3.7. You might have Python 3.9. If that's the case, you're either going to, one, go back and reinstall the 64-bit version, or two, change your Python version. I'm going to show you how to change your Python version to 3.7, and I'm just going to open up... Uh, which one am I going to open up? I want this one. So for those of you who are going to change your Python version to 3.7, or maybe you found a match, but if you're following along with me and need to change your Python version to 3.7, this is the one you're going to use, and I'm also going to help you change your Python version. Back in the Raspberry Pi, for those of you who do not need to change your Python version, you don't need to do anything special, you found the right shell command that matched these outputs, skip forward to the next timestamp in this video. For those of you who need to change your Python version, sit tight, we're going to do that. How are we going to do that? We're going to do that with this thing called pyenv. So first, let's get curl sudo apt git install curl. All right, looks like I already have it. And so now we're going to install pyenv. curl https colon forward slash forward slash pyenv dot run and pipe that to bash. Now we got to edit our dot bash rc file. So sudo nano squiggly dash dot bash rc. Now we're in the nano editor and we're going to add some lines to the bottom of this. Scrolling all the way down, I'm just going to page down. Okay, enter, enter. And I'm just going to copy and paste this text in. You can find this in the description or just type it in from here. Then control S to save, control X to exit. Let's restart our shell. Exec dollar sign in all caps, shell, awesome. And now we have pyenv installed, but we don't have any new Python versions installed. Before we can do any of that, we need to install some system packages. I have a big list for you in the description. Copy and paste that. Now let's update pyenv, pyenv, update. Probably already up to date if you just installed it. And now we're going to install Python version. So pyenv install dash dash list. And we can see every Python version we can install. We are looking for 3.7.12. That's what we want. And then, ooh, where's the terminal? Oh gosh, okay. Then we're gonna run pyenv install 3.7.12, enter. This is gonna take a little while. I'll install my 32-bit people or whoever's watching this section to change the Python version. So now we're gonna make a project directory mkdir project change directories into project you can title this whatever you'd like and now how does pyenv work if i do python dash version right now it's going to say 3.9.2 but if i do pyenv local and then whatever version i just downloaded 3.7.12 that changes this project directory's python version to 3.7.12 so now when i do python dash version, I'm going to see 3.7.12. I'm going to CD back out of that. And now, hello everybody, we should all be reunited now. If you're changing your Python version and watch that last section, thanks for sticking with it. If you skip forward, hello again. For those of you who haven't, let's make a project directory. mkdir project, I already have one. So I'm just going to CD into project. Okay, before I create my virtual environment, I'm just going to check my Python version. 
dash capital V. And so I changed it in that last part just to show people what it was, but I was going to use Python 3.9. So I'm just going to do pyenv local dash dash unset. Nobody needs to run this command except me, just, just so you all know. Python dash V, and now we have Python 3.9. So I got that 64-bit Python 3.9 combo. For others, if you followed that pyenv section, then you got the 32-bit Python 3.7 combo. You can do this with any combo that has an appropriate TensorFlow wheel shell command install, but those are the two that I'm just gonna walk through with you today. Let's install the virtual environment package. Python 3-m pip install virtual env. Let's create a virtual environment. Python 3-m virtual env env and now let's activate that virtual environment source env bin activate so we got that little env in parentheses saying we're in this python container and we're not going to contaminate any other packages with the things that we do here double check your python version i got python 3.9.2 with the 64-bit architecture. And then you could also have Python 3.7.12 if you followed along with the pyenv tutorial, and that'll work nicely with the 32-bit architecture. Let's install a bunch more system packages. I'm gonna put the big list in the description. I'm gonna paste them here, hit enter. Now we're ready to start installing TensorFlow. Go back to that shell file you selected. So in my case, I selected the Python 3.9 with the ARCH64, but if you were doing the 32-bit, then you should have the 3.7 or whatever matching Python version, and then ARM v7. Click this button right here, raw. Copy the link, and let's go back to the terminal. Let's go w git and then paste that link. Web git is what that stands for. So now if we ls, we see we have that download file right here with that shell command. We want to turn that into an executable, chmod. Oop, we need sudo chmod plus x and then that file, enter. So now we're letting it run. We're saying this is safe to run, this is okay. And let's run that period forward slash and then down I'm gonna push tab to autocomplete enter awesome all those files are downloaded if we ls here we can see we have a wheel file now and we want to install tensorflow using that wheel file before we do that let's uninstall any versions of tensorflow we might have uninstall tensorflow Enter. I don't have any installed, so it's going to tell me that. And now do the same thing without the sudo, just to be safe. Awesome. And now we're ready to install TensorFlow. Pip install. And then it's going to be that name of this WHL wheel file. So rather than copy and pasting the whole thing, I'm just going to press tab. It should autocomplete. And then enter. Bada boom, let's try to see if it works. Python 3 to get into a Python 3 interpreter. Import TensorFlow as TF. Successful import so far. TF dot underscore underscore version. Ho oh, ho, we got it installed. Some of you might get an odd error like HDF5 or something. I've had this issue with the 32-bit 4B with the Python 3.7 version. And all you gotta do is you look at this circled part that I have here and then run this command, okay? And match the circled part to where I have desired version. 
Okay, quit to get back to my terminal. Hopefully everyone's up to speed, got TensorFlow working, and we're gonna move on to OpenCV. If you're using a Raspberry Pi 3, I'm gonna say right away, you can try my method, but it might fail. What I would recommend is you go to this video, go all the way up to step 17, and after step 17, then hop on to the command I'm gonna do right here. It's really just one command. pip install opencv dash Python. If you're using a four, this is gonna work great. If you're using a four with 64 bit, this is gonna take a couple minutes. 32 bit, it takes me a couple hours. I can't even start to explain how long it's gonna take for the Pi 3. Usually it's a long time. And note, there is another one you could do. So I have opencv dash Python. There's also opencv dash contrib dash Python. And this installs even more, like you have more access to libraries and different customizations. So you could use that if you'd like. I'm not that advanced of a user for OpenCV, so I'm just gonna do OpenCV-Python, enter. It was like 10, maybe 20 seconds. And then if you have a Pi camera, run pip install quotes Pi camera, square bracket, array, square bracket, quote. I did not, so I'm not gonna execute that command. Let's test our OpenCV installation. Import CV2, CV2 dot double underscore version, double underscore, and it works. Let's double check that we also have TensorFlow still. Import TensorFlow as TF, TF dot double underscore, version quit there you go leave a comment if you got stuck at any spot leave a comment if you have a request for a video and then also if you found this helpful leave a like or subscribe a like or a subscription lets me know that you found this valuable it's also encouraging and happy coding